UN's top court is set to rule on a request for Germany to halt military aid to Israel. The case was filed by Nicaragua, which argues that Berlin is failing to prevent genocide or uphold international humanitarian law. It's the latest case involving Israel before the International Court of Justice. South Africa approached the court in December, accusing Israel of committing genocide. And then the U.S. has found five Israeli military units responsible for gross human rights violations in the occupied West Bank. This is the first time Washington has reached such a conclusion. Now, these incidents took place before the war on Gaza in October. Despite the findings, the State Department said the units have not been sanctioned. Patty Colhane explains. For weeks, we've been waiting for the U.S. State Department to announce the results of its investigation into whether certain units in Israel's defense forces committed gross violations of human rights. The reason is the Secret Secretary of State himself, Anthony Blinken, said earlier this month that he had made the determination. Now, this is important because if it is found that these certain units violated human rights, there's laws inside the United States that says no U.S. military aid can go to those units. Well, we now know it's unlikely to happen. Four of these units have effectively remediated these violations, which is what we expect partners to do. Um, it is uh, consistent with uh, what we expect all countries whom with we have a security relationship. The deputy spokesman here at the State Department was repeatedly pressed on this issue and he just simply wouldn't answer the questions, such as what exactly were the gross violations of human rights? What units were involved? Exactly how did Israel remediate the situation? And what kind of information Israel provided? Again, he simply wouldn't say. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera at the State Department. Let's go to Stephanie Decker joining us now from Occupied East Jerusalem. So we've known for at least a couple of days now that Washington is considering the imposition of sanctions on this uh, Israeli military battalion accused of abuses against Palestinians. Tell us more about this military unit and their alleged activities. Yes, this came out last week. The Netza Yehuda Battalion, they are an ultra-Orthodox battalion. A lot of the soldiers there actually live in the occupied West Bank. Um, last week, when we covered it, uh, the Americans had said that they would be sanctioning this particular unit. This unit was moved out of the West Bank in 2022 when the incident happened. One of the incidents um, believed to be part of the charges is that they killed a 78-year-old Palestinian-American dual citizen. They bound him, gagged him and left him to die in sub-freezing temperatures in the occupied West Bank. Now, you were mentioning there four other battalions. They haven't been named, uh, but you were talking about, uh, you heard Patty there questioning what allegations. This all came to light uh, with an investigation and an article ProPublica. Um, it's an American body, did just a couple of weeks ago. They have a few of the allegations, including the 78-year-old Palestinian-American that I mentioned, but they also accuse the border police. This is not part of the army, but it is part of the security forces saying extrajudicial killings by the border police. And then one other allegation they mentioned, these are the only three, that, in, that interrogators tortured and raped a teenager accused of throwing Molotov cocktail. So the bigger picture is this. Um, you heard there from Patty. They believe that four of the units have remediated, meaning they're now fine and they will continue to receive military aid. The Netza Yehuda Battalion last week wasn't going to receive military aid. Now they've given Israel more time to look into it. Also, why? Because of the massive backlash at the time. If you have Israel's biggest allies, biggest supplier of military aid, actually recognizing in a way that its security forces are responsible for gross human rights violations against the Palestinians, something that the Palestinians will tell you happens on a daily basis. Uh, there's been massive backlash. The Israeli prime minister is saying that he would fight any sanctions personally, you had the Minister of Defense, you had really across the political spectrum because you simply do not criticize the army in Israel. So I think significantly, certainly, that this is now being highlighted, that the American recommendations is that some of these should be sanctioned. But interesting, as you heard from Patty, is that U.S. Secretary of State uh, Blinken had been sitting on this report since December, uh, and so far really nothing has been done about it. Thank you very much, Stephanie Decker. 
Let's now bring in Salman Sheikh. He's the founder of the peacebuilding organization, the Sheikh Group, and a former UN official. And it's important to bear in mind that there has been a long-running history of violence uh, against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank, but this has seen a, a sharp acceleration since October. The, uh, the involvement of this particular battalion precedes October, and it seems as though Washington is going in the direction of uh, not imposing sanctions, as far as we know. Well, it's part of a pattern that we've seen where the United States and the Biden administration have provided cover and made excuses for the actions of Prime Minister Netanyahu's government and those of the Israeli army um, on the ground. That cannot hold. The walls are closing in. International law has to be administered. Otherwise, we will see the event of particularly Joe Biden, but also Western countries, effectively cannibalizing international law and the rules-based international order, which they themselves set up after the horrors of the Second World War. But tell me, hasn't that already happened? Well, yes, uh, of mm. course, we have ample evidence. And those who have committed those grave violations of international humanitarian law, whether they are Hamas or other Palestinian groups, but also the Israeli army, where they have been disproportionate from the start in terms of their operations. But of course, as you said, this has happened for a very long time. This cannot continue. And, you know, the rest of the world, as I go mm. through diplomatic offices and, and capitals around the world, everyone knows that there is, a, uh, there is now a, a grave situation. And it's probably, mm. again, the Biden administration, coming back to your original question, which can turn us away from, from where we are right now. And in terms of the grave situation, it seems as though we are seeing countries in the developing world, in the global south, that are, are taking measures to try and push back against it. We were just mentioning that Nicaragua had initiated proceedings against Germany. This was back in, in March. They were going to see some uh, progress on that today, accusing Berlin of facilitating genocide in Gaza by providing support to Israel. How important is this case, not just for Gaza, but for any state that manufactures uh, and supplies weapons that are ultimately used to commit violations of uh, international humanitarian law? Well, it should be of grave concern to Berlin. It should be of grave concern to the German Chancellery um, because it's something which I believe is a part of a pattern which we'll continue to see. We've seen how South Africa mm. originally initiated the, the, the case in the ICJ against Israel, and now we see uh, Nicaragua. And the Global South which we need <laughs> as part of, a, of an alliance in the changing geopolitics of the globe is no longer accepting that. Mm. And it is the reason why I think uh, European capitals and Washington again have to think really hard about their actions, including the supply of weaponry um, to the Israeli army, offensive weaponry, and which is now also reflected in their campuses of mm. universities that I myself have seen in Paris or in Washington. Uh, but I suppose in recognizing that uh, these crimes are taking place, given Washington's incredible financial and uh, military support for Israel, that, there w that then there would be some sort of recognition that uh, they too are complicit in what is happening. Well, mm. they would implicate the, themselves. Well, this is the case yeah. being made by Americans. Mm. It's the case being made by Germans or other Europeans. And it's being made by those younger mm. people, particularly in the United States, who do matter. We have a 1968 moment, in my view, going on right now. And you remember what happened in 1968. The Democratic Convention was held in Chicago in August. Well, it's going to happen again this year in 1960, uh, this year in 2024. Mm. And if this war does not stop, if we don't then start to rebuild Gaza and allow the population to, um, uh, to be able to go back to their homes, as well as to hold accountable those who have been mm. part of the grave violations of international humanitarian law which have taken place, then I fear that President Biden is going to meet the same fate 
um, uh, that uh, the Democrats did then in 1968 when they lost the election. And the, in terms of the significance of what is happening, you mentioned the student protests, and, and perhaps something we've not seen before is that we now see teachers and professors that are prepared to get involved who are facing disciplinary action and in some cases sacrificing uh, reputations and careers uh, in order to take a stand. Does that surprise you? Not entirely, no. Um, I think Not something the, we've seen before, perhaps. Well, it's the weight of evidence. Um, of course, we've seen it in the past in yeah. terms of other protest movements. I myself was leading the anti-apartheid group in my university in the 1990s and 2000s. Um, but, uh, uh, but, you know, it's, it's a particularly heightened situation. Now, yeah. I think back to when I used to visit Professor Edward Said in Columbia University, when I was working for the UN, when I was actually working for the UN Middle East Peace Envoy, and he always said that you cannot hold truth back. And that is what we're seeing now. Salman Sheikh, thank you very much. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Algeria.